All right, I'm live. Okay, so let me preface tonight by saying a couple things. First of all, I've been recording for several hours, so you may see me reaching for my water, <laughs> which is behind the camera. Uh, also, you may, uh, I may need to look at my notes. Okay, listen, <laughs> you see I'm already a little bit like thrown off. I've been recording for several hours, and in my mind, I have uh, some of the verbiage that's in the explainer videos, and it is crossing my wires. Um, also, my allergies are cutting up. So I just want to let you know that ahead of time that you may see me looking down here um, at my notes. But anyway, all right, let's talk about my nemesis. Ugh. Oh, man. And that is people pleasing. Um, it is something that I have personally dealt with that many of the Black women that I know have personally dealt with. Um, and honestly, it still is having a little bit effect of, a, of an effect on me um, even recently. And I'll share that with you after I go over um, the different ways that it does sneak up on you in your life. Um, and I will tell you that when I had a business coach tell me that I was a people pleaser, <laughs> I don't know what he said that for. I'm glad we were on Zoom because if we would have been in person, I might have gotten up and walked out. And that is because to me, people pleasers are doormats. People pleasers are uh, those who don't know how to stand up for themselves. They have low self-esteem and low confidence and all of these very um, limited traits that I grew up associating that with. So you know, when I finally simmered down um, and any good business coach is going to say something that may poke and prod and get you a little bit heated. And then they're going to wait for you to, you know, simmer down. And then you're going to discuss what you were feeling. And I explained to him that that was the case for me. And then he began to reveal to me a few of the ways that he heard people pleasing in our time that we were spending together, which led me down a whole people pleasing rabbit hole. And um, I definitely want to share some of those things with you today because you may be like me, like I was, and having um, one association with people pleasing only when in fact it shows up as many, many ways in our lives. So let me go ahead and introduce myself first. So hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Prill uh, and um, on this channel, we explore my own path to self-discovery. I tell you some of the highs and the lows and the things that, um, the honest perspective, there's a lot of great things, I have a lot of joy, but I also have a lot of work to do still. And so I'm doing that in front of you and I cannot wait to tell you what happened. Some of you all may be like, how is this a good thing? But I'm gonna explain that to you why. Okay, so. Let's start talking about, oh, you know what? I see some people in chat, so hello. Go ahead and tell me where you are tuning in from. And I'm gonna check in with you here in a couple points. Now, as I mentioned before, people pleasing can sneak into your life and uh, be present without you even realizing it. And as women and as black women, I think that we have a unique uh, responsibility that society, our cultures, how we were raised professionally that they place on us. And I'll speak for myself. There were some times where I really uh, struggled, and I've been honest about this, to meet everybody's expectations for me. At work, I have to make sure that I'm assertive, but I'm not too loud or confident or too Black because then they're... Um, you know, going to label me difficult or label me an angry Black woman. I also, from church, was taught to not only serve your man, but to serve God, um, you know, put others before yourself, to put anything that brings you joy, if it doesn't fit into the ties, you know, if it interferes with the ties and offering, that you have to do that. Um, in the household where I grew up, my mother was very, very Southern, so we were expected to be these little, I guess, Northerner. <laughs> But, you know, have the etiquette classes and um, be, you know, kind of out of that Jack and Jill uh, generation and also to kind of hide and play small and stay out of the way. And 
it continued uh, into adulthood. As I mentioned, I had that business coach that kind of put me on to the ways that people pleasing was showing up in, in our business conversations and led me to see how it was showing up in other places. And as I frequently mention, when I was embarking on my own path to self-discovery five years ago, five years ago uh, in October, 19th to be exact, <laughs> I realized that I felt alone. No, I realized. I, I realized I was alone. All of the people in my world were not into, um, you know, this change. They were not, um, they were projecting their fears on me, uh, you know, whether, uh, you know, the, it, it was meant in uh, coming from a loving place where they didn't want to see me get hurt or make mistakes. Um, people would mention, but you work so hard. You know, I have three degrees, okay? <laughs> And I have uh, almost a decade that I was in school straight. So um, to walk away from that, you know, people say a lot of things. And I did what I normally do, which is keep things to myself. And I was alone. And I want you to see someone, you know, my goal here on this channel was to see someone that uh, certain parts of me resonate with you. Or some things that I say, you're like, dang. I think the same thing where I feel the same way. So let's get into it. I've waxed poetic enough. Now I'm going to look down here. I got two sets of notes. I had to pull it up on my phone because like I said, it was my wires were crossing. Hello, Meg P. Thank you for joining. Okay. Now, one of the first ways that people pleasing shows up, I think is the most obvious one. And that is those of us who had difficulty saying no. Um, and we're going to talk about some of those uh, other kind of ancillary feelings, but you say yes to everything. And it's not even things that you want to say yes to. You say yes because it's what's expected. It is what is easier. It's the path of least resistance. It is something that you know um, is potentially going to disappoint people or hurt people. So instead of saying no, you say yes. Now, that again is more of an obvious way, but let's talk about some that are not so obvious. Okay, so when you say yes to everything or you say yes to things that you don't want to do, that is emotionally taxing on you. Now, let's keep in mind, society expects Black women to be, I call it the magical Negro, <laughs> but society expects Black women to be strong. They expect us to always have uh, the right things to say, words of wisdom. They expect us to be up before them and, you know, uh, in bed after everybody goes to sleep. They expect us to be these high achieving, high performing type A black women, whether that's what they call it or not, that's what they expect. There's a lot of weight that comes with that, especially during this process as you are really thinking about what your own path to, to self-discovery may look like that's gonna add even more strain on you because you're stretching yourself and you're doing something that you are not typically used to doing. So when you're saying yes to things that emotionally in your heart, you don't really want to, that leads to overextending yourself. And when you overextend yourself, that is a 99.9999% guarantee to lead straight to overwhelm and burnout. Because again, those those two run hand in hand. So you may see it at the high level. Okay, people have trouble saying no, but what does that look like? And I want you to ask yourself, have you felt overextended? Now, I will be honest with you. I used to get, oh, okay, my mouth started watering. My mouth waters when I get excited. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> um, but I remember looking at my calendar at work. And I had uh, color coded for just certain meetings and standing things. And I just remember looking at it. And when people would say, hey, I checked your calendar, but there's no room. OK, let me move some stuff around for you. Or I really felt uh, accomplished, like I was earning you know, my wage or like I deserve to be there because look at all of the things that I'm doing at this company. Well, let's not mention my business that I had. Let's not mention my home life that I had. Um, that I was also doing those things, helping terminally um, a terminally ill parent and being there to support, you know, my surviving parent. 
all types of things that were going on. And I want you to notice what I didn't say. I didn't say, and still find time for my, or still find time for me too. Um, there was no, no me, I, we in this equation. It really was everyone else. So again, I want you to think, hello, uh, Pisces Pret, Pret or Preet. Let me know if I'm saying it correctly. Um, but yeah, that is how those two run hand in hand. So don't just look at it at the surface where it's like, okay, obviously you have trouble saying no. You're a doormat, okay? People take advantage of you, they use you. Let's talk about what that looks like. I really enjoy talking about the how and the why behind the what. Okay, let's talk about something else that also um, showed up in my life and that is sacrificing my goals and my dreams. I'm gonna give you a real example. I use one for work, I use one in my personal life. And, and for those of you who have not heard me mention it before, um, I was a teen mom. I got pregnant at 16, had my son at 17, and we went off to college at 18. And um, so I had spent the bulk of my adult life thinking about someone else first, as many times um, parents should and is expected. But again, mine was unbalanced because my last point of reference was this shy, awkward, you know, 16 year old, but still. Um, as a single parent, solely single parent, I knew that my son only had me. Now, how did that begin to show up in other areas of my life? It makes sense as a single mom who's in school, you know, the first uh, 11 and some change if you count, you know, my research project. But I'm in school for the majority of my son's life. So 10, 10 straight years I was in school, full time, working. Um, because even though they give you a stipend, that's not enough, okay? <laughs> it's not enough. Um, I was working, I was tutoring, I was a baseball mom, um, you know, all of these things. So my life was definitely jam-packed. But I did, I sacrificed some of my dreams that I had because my son and I grew up together. I was a child when I had him, and I was a kid, <laughs> You know, by the time he hit 10 years old, I was still so young and, and very, um, hadn't lived life a lot. So I want you to think about what have you sacrificed that should be a limited time, right? Babies, like it is, is, is children or whomever you're caring for, um, other than you, we could use a job even. They need a lot of attention at first. And then as they get more independent, you can do some things. I know as a parent, soon as that baby got out of diapers, right? When you get potty trained, it seems like oh, the whole world opens up to you, right? People want to babysit. They don't want to babysit when they got to change, you know, diapers and stuff. But when that child is potty trained, not only do people want to babysit, but you can go certain places. Okay. So with each year that passes, in theory, it should open up time for you. At your job, maybe you're coming in, you don't know very much. So, of course, you're going to be um, acutely aware because everything that you're learning for, for quite some time, every single day, is going to be new to you. Maybe not new skill set um, or new everything, but new at least in that environment. And, you know, as an adult, I never turned that off. Instead of exploring who I was um, and doing what I'm doing now, you know, being on my path to self discipline uh, to self-discovery, almost said self-destruction. <laughs> Hold on, let me get some water. I told y'all I've been recording all day. I cannot wait to eat. Okay, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so if you're, like I said, like me and you're a late bloomer, as far as really just getting put on to some of these things and seeing it from different perspectives, then you are going to look for something else. You have to imagine like water. If you pour water in something, it's going to look for that lowest point. And that is what people pleasing is going to do because you feel comfortable in it. So, so certain things are going to look for that lowest point. And many times you're going to sacrifice your dreams. Um, I had plans to travel when my son got to a certain age. But as I mentioned, my mother got sick. Then it was dealing with my father. Then I got into a, a relationship. I was in a relationship for a long time, almost a decade. And that put things on the back burner because I'm thinking he doesn't like to do certain things that I like to do. Well, maybe he'll come around. Maybe he'll change. Maybe it's just his finances right now. You know, there's a lot of putting this thought and consideration into justifying and um, rationalizing how we interact with other people and how we put other people's um, 
feelings before our own feelings. And I want you to, you know, like the GPS says, or hold on, like I had to do not that long ago, make a legal U-turn when possible. <laughs> so that's what you got to do. You got to flip. Oh, I almost said something. Okay. In Cleveland, we say flip a, boop, boop, you know, <laughs> you got to turn the car around, turn it around. You can always turn it around. You don't need to go so far down this road. It's a new road. So just go ahead and turn it around if you feel like you're going the wrong way. Okay. Let me stay on track. All right. Something else that also... I think all of these I have done to keep it a buck with you. <laughs> Some to more severity than others. But again, these are general things that are going to show up. May not exactly how I'm saying it, um, but I really want you to think about this and rewatch it again if you need to take notes. I, ju I just want you to listen this time and kind of just, you know, go with the flow. And speaking of go with the flow, <laughs> that's a perfect segue into my next point of avoiding conflict. Many times we don't speak up when we want to. We don't say things when when we, I think, know in our heart we need to. We acquiesce simply to keep the peace, simply to go with the flow, simply because it's easier for who? Not us, but it's easier for them. We may try to convince ourselves that it's easier for us. It's not. We say it's the easiest thing, but who who is saddled with those emotions? Again, think about you in this and think about how you view other people and who you put first and why you do it. Again, uh, self-discovery or any growth period starts with self-awareness. It's just constant self-awareness. Okay. Um, something else is now this, I didn't know nope, that would be false. Okay. Seeking external validation. Now, I was about to say this is not something that I dealt with. Yes and no. External validation to me was limited to, again, the proverbial people pleaser. You want people to like you. So you're the one that spends all the money. You're the one buying rounds. You're the one who is like, oh, that's okay. I'll pay for it because you want people to be your friend and that and, and to be liked and to feel that sense of community. It feels great to be accepted. Oh my goodness, there's <laughs> there's no better feeling than to be in community. But sometimes some people are in it for free, but then we pay admission, okay? We done, some people bought their tickets when they went on sale or they got the VIP, right? So they don't, <laughs> they didn't pay for the tickets. Us, we bought them from the scalpers. So our price of admission is a lot higher. But again, what does that look like? It's that constant up and down, up and down, fighting with yourself on the inside that says, I probably shouldn't be doing this. You know, I need to use this money for something else. I need this for my tires and offering. I'm just like, <laughs> but I need this for something else. I need it for me. What about for me? But instead, autopilot, we just do this stuff um, almost like clockwork and do it unconsciously, ignoring our intuition and our feelings. So that's something else I want you to think about is how you seek external validation from other people. For me, it was my work product. I got so much validation and being able to check everything off my list, checking it twice, making sure it was accurate, making sure it was right. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that could be a song. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> As I said it, I'm like, whoa. Okay. Again, y'all, please charge it to my heart and not my mind because your girl has not eaten all day and it is 519. And, I, and it's a lot of energy it takes voice acting. So um, anyway, y'all didn't ask that. Okay, now back to the point. So <laughs> I want you to think about what, what gives you a sense of pleasure and joy, but that, it, that benefits other people or other things, your job, your church, a board that you're on, a volunteer organization that you belong to, um, committees, sororities, things like that. I want you to think about all of these things that I've listed. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to recap these real fast. I'm just going to say them. If you have not liked this video, go ahead and like it. I'd appreciate that. Um, also, if you are watching from the future, hello, and go ahead and like this video. Now, again, one is difficulty saying no. Two, overextending yourself. Three, sacrificing your dreams and your personal goals. Four, seeking, wait a minute, four, avoiding conflict, and five, seeking that external validation. Now, as I mentioned, if you are doing things for other people, 
It is either, it is an and or. It's an either and or, okay? It is going to cost you financially. It is going to cost you emotionally. It's going to cost you um, spiritually, you know, mentally. And when that happens, again, because you're doing so much for others, you're not thinking about yourself. You're also, you are sacrificing and neglecting your own self-care and self-prioritization. Now, I used to think the self-care was limited to the massages, the facials, getting your hair, your nails done, um, you know, maybe a little retail therapy, treating yourself. And that can be part of it for many people. For me, that's not necessarily how it shows up. It shows up for me being able to uh, have my time blocked each day and me honoring, okay, because it's usually other people will, you know, they treat us how we allow them to treat us. Again, it doesn't negate um, any negative ways, but I'm saying that we allow these things. So when we have most times, of course, there's, you know, extenuating circumstances and we don't need to go into that user imagination. But for the most part, people interact with us. People's expectations are set. Um, people have an existing dynamic based on how we respond to them. And I made a commitment to honor my own boundaries, to honor my own promises that I made to myself. And that looks like making sure that I, you know, take time away. I step away for about 10 minutes every hour. I go for walks or I go to a park just not too far from my house and I sit in my car because there's a big old lake there. Yes, Phoenix has lakes. Are they natural? No, but nonetheless, they're still beautiful. And I watch the ducks and I watch people fishing and I just listen to the water. Um, sometimes I may uh, sit here, take a nap, um, you know, just do things that I want to do, or I can do absolutely nothing at all. Again, because I want to do it. It's my time. I do what I want. So that's how I do self-care. Obviously, I love to get facials. I, I love to, um, you know, travel. And so I choose to spend my, you know, stack my money up to take some of these great scouting trips that I have coming up next year. But what does that look like to you? What does self-care and self-prioritization look like for you? And if you say, I don't know because I haven't been doing it, then how about you take um, 15 minutes each day? You could even put it, you know, seven and a half, seven and a half, but take 15 minutes to do something that you want, not something that's on your to-do list. I'm not talking about, you know, you, on your break time, you're taking, you know, you're running errands or you're doing like that, that doesn't count. Even if you just sit still in your car, roll the windows down, listen to some affirmations, listen to some music, just anything like the sky is the limit because again, it's, it's you and you do what you want. All right, let me move on to number seven. And I made a video about this that I'm going to link um, in the description because it really, um, again, it's, it's the how and the why behind the what. And that is a video that is decoding perfection. And um, when you watch that, it goes into conditioning. And I do, um, I, I begin to string together all of, you know, typical black women's. And again, we are not all, uh, we are not a monolith, so we are all different, but just typically some things that are, um, in my experience, because I'm a black woman, <laughs> you know, limited to black women and string them together so that you can begin to put the pieces to the puzzle to see why you are um, the version of yourself that you are today and how you ended up as this version of yourself. But striving per for perfection, that's number seven. Typically, you know, I, I used to say, I know there's no such thing as perfect, but there is such thing as perfect to me. You know, like in my world, in, in my sphere that I could control, there was a perfect. I could feel it. It, it felt like it was done right. Um, no, that's that's just the lies that we tell ourselves. That's still perfection. Um, you know, my therapist told me I was a perfectionist. Again, highly offended because <laughs> like you're insulting my intelligence. I know there's no such thing as perfect. But again, perfection is not limited to this, you know, tiny scope that you think there is a such thing as perfect. We have our own euphemisms and our own, uh, I think, indicators as how we process and how we feel about perfectionism. So again, I'm going to link that um, in the description so you can go ahead and check that video out. 
Now, here's something else that we have all dealt with, okay? I say all. I don't know. Y'all, I'm just saying it. But it's probably the truth. <laughs> if this does not apply to you, great. Then put it in the comments, okay? <laughs> but that is the fear of rejection. And it can show up as us being disliked by other people. I mean, that's the obvious thing. They say, you know, we don't want to play with you anymore. Okay. Mm, you know, and at, and at uh, work, what does that look like? By not being, I call it the cool kids club. You're not invited to the little lunches or they have a whole, uh, you know, discord group that you don't know about. Um, <laughs> things like that. They let you know that you're not welcomed. And that's not a good feeling. As I mentioned before, there was no better feeling than um, you know, the feeling of belonging, but there's other ways that it could show up. It could even show up in the reluctance to, as I mentioned, speak up and assert ourselves and show that confidence because we believe that others are not going to accept that. I'm going to tell you a quick story about my hair. Okay. <laughs> People know me by usually my hair, my voice, uh, you know, my teeth, my eyes, certain things, but I used to wear my hair pulled back. Like that picture that I put on the thumbnail is a picture that I took at a conference when I'd been gone from corporate, probably about a year at that point. That was like, you couldn't tell me I wasn't, um, I wasn't doing something with that hair. Now it's cute. Let, you know, let me not, it looks nice in the picture, but that was me expressing my, uh, I guess, um, the ethnic side that I had uh avoided for the bulk of my life i've always had very long hair very healthy hair um you know at church sometimes people would tease me in school uh, a little boy tried to cut my hair off and me let's just say that i got suspended but but my mother wasn't mad because you know you shouldn't let people try to cut your hair off um and so i began to pull my hair back by high school and wore it in a bun over my little skull cap and my little carhartt hoodie and that's kind of how I wore my hair, pulled back. Why? Because people react to this hair. And I used to say, my hair looks fun and it's short compared to how it used to be. So imagine this, except curly and coming, you know, down close to my elbow. Um, I, I rarely let people see my hair outside of, you know, my braid and my bun because it drew too much attention. And I, and I all I wanted to do was blend in. I, I, I realized that blending in is also playing small. But at that time, I, I just wanted to show up, do what I need to do, go unnoticed and be left alone. So again, what are you doing that is that you can tie to doing it to avoid the potential feeling of rejection or the, you know, um, the feeling of not belonging or not being wanted? Or let me say this, not being needed. I will tell you that was a huge reason why. I can tell you this now, but that was a huge reason why I did not take a lot of my vacation time when um, I was in corporate because I really, I got something out of knowing that I was needed. Now, was it needed? No, it was, I was being used, <laughs> used and abused, but I felt that it was, you know, that they need me. I'm doing something um, that's important, that's so important that they know I'm on vacation and they say, hey, I know you're on vacation, but like I'm the only one who can answer this question. Again, the lies that we tell ourselves and it's done for protection, but still that is how um, potential rejection shows up in the various ways. Now, this is something, look, now this was me, okay, all day. If this would be number one, if you ask me to rank them, this is gonna be number one. Feeling guilty. So there's some of us who, you know, acquiesce to, uh, you know, avoid the conflict or just it's the easiest, easiest way or the path to least resistance. I avoided feelings of guilt. When I said no to someone, keep in mind, they could say, okay, first of all, I got to go before I started saying no. I didn't say no. Once I started working, you know, with my therapist on saying no, I'm being assertive in that space as it associated with work. I believe, and I don't know if this is the correct usage, but I believe I had a trauma bond with work. 
because in real life, I was a different person. That person began to wither, wither, wither away as work took over. So I was that person longer than I was someone who was consumed by work. But yet there was a disconnect. And it just seemed like I couldn't wrap my head around how to say no to them at work. Now, let's be honest. If you say no, most likely that's going to put a target on your back. Like, you know, like I said, let's just be honest. But you still have the right to say no. And many of us don't take it, like I said, because of not wanting to be rejected, um, wanting to keep the peace. And in my case, I didn't want to feel guilty. So by the time I started being able to tell people, no, first of all, I had to build up to it. So if you ask me, hey, <laughs> I use the meetup, for example. Um, I loved going to the, the Phoenix meetup. Um, met a wonderful woman, uh, Debbie Cotton. There were two of us there. So it's fine. You know, humble beginnings. But let's just use that because that's something I would have said no to. So, hey, do you want to, you know, meet at this uh, this African restaurant on Sunday? Okay, sure. Okay, I'm gonna say yes. In the moment, from the inside, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said yes because no, I don't want to go um, for whatever reason. And you don't need a reason. It's because you don't want to. Period. The end. But I would have had to work myself up. I probably would have had to talk to my therapist. We probably would have had to do a little, a little test run and role play. I would have been so like worked up. I would have sent the text or, you know, like type the text out and then erase it. Type the text out, erase it. Um, should I call her? Okay, no, I'm not about to call because we text each other. We do Facebook messaging. Okay, I'm going to, okay, I'm, I'm going to text her. And then guess what? She would have said, okay, <laughs> right? And then do you know how long I would be mulling that over? Like, is she going to be like ticked at me? Like, was that a okay, like flippant okay? Or it was just okay like period, and I'm reading too much into it because keep in mind, this is a text, you know. I, f I used to feel guilty about doing things for myself, putting myself first. And as I mentioned, I believe last week's video, I um, am currently working on this like next iteration of putting myself first um, and doing things for myself because I want to. I no longer feel that guilt I no longer feel the need to justify uh, as heavily, but I still run through a little kind of thing in my head and I still am uncomfortable doing it because I want to. Even though I may not verbalize it on the inside, I'm, I'm saying, well, I deserve this or well, I've earned this or it's been a long time since. I really want to work towards doing it um, like I have done with just say, saying no. I exercise my right to say no. I don't do things that I don't want to do. And that's that. I want to be able to do things that I do want to do, period. So that's something I'm working on. Um, and let me know again, if any of these things are landing with you, um, I want to hear from you in the chat. Again, if you're watching from the future, go ahead. Let's continue this conversation in the chat. Now, the 10th thing, let me look at my time because, you know, I'm not going to be before you long today. All right. Is ignoring red flags. So I'm sure that you have heard that saying that hindsight's 2020. It's not necessarily the hind that, you know, that now you that you see things that weren't there. Now you can see the things that were there. When you look back over whatever relationship or your time someplace, you can see all of those things that were the opportunities or the red flags, as we like to call them, um, where you could have got off that ride. Having said that, I believe that the main driver of ignoring those red flags are ignoring our intuition. Now, I don't know about other women or men for that matter, because again, I'm a black woman, but black women, we are something special, special, special. And our intuition Okay, whether you want to call it intuition, whether you want to call it spirit, the Holy Spirit, your gut, okay, the, your spidey senses, call it whatever you want to. That has been so diluted throughout our lives that we second guess, we second guess it, okay? 
Um, so if, if you're in a church, for example, it may look like, did I really hear, you know, it, did I interpret the word correctly? Is that really what I felt like God is leading me to do? Is that like what the pastor meant? It, it is really, um, it gets to the point where we can't even trust ourselves. <laughs> and those red flags, that's our intuition. And ours is strong, which is why everybody else relies on us. They rely on us and our intuition to be able to help them. And we can think about it. You are probably the best friend that you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like you are a good friend. You are a good sibling. You are a good, you know, daughter or partner, spouse, whatever. People tell you something like that. You see it, you hear it, you know. Again, because we are so programmed and conditioned to put other people first, to put ourselves last, if we're considering ourselves at all, that we don't even we are not in touch with our own intuition as it applies to ourselves. So yes, there's red flags, but there's also our intuition. And I want you to think about sometimes, I can think about several, even when I was out in them streets, okay? Back in the day, there were times when, even though I, I didn't consider myself a Christian at that time, I was very angry with God. You know, we had, we had some beef or whatever, <laughs> but I still knew enough to, pay attention to that, like, I call it a pain. It's almost like, uh, like, it's almost like the whoop. Okay, so you know the whooping feeling. Now that's anxiety, all right? This is not that, but you know what you first get? Like, it's like that feeling and then it, your stomach knots up when, when you process that, I'm about to whip you, uh, you know? So <laughs> it's like that pain in our stomachs and too many times we talk ourselves out of it. I know that I need to leave this job, but... I know that this relationship is no longer serving me, but I know that I've been friends with this woman for 20 years and, you know, she knows where our bodies are buried. But, okay, like, again, we put ourselves last if we think about ourselves at all. I sat here, like, typically you see me sitting here in my videos um, <laughs> when I'm on other people's channels here on lives because this is this is truly my spot on the couch. I mean, the whole couch is technically mine, but you know what I mean. This is my spot. I sit here, I have my little comfy pillow that's over there, you can't see it. And usually I'm like linked up on my pillow or like over here, which is the arm that's out of frame. But I would sit here and have these epiphanies. Oh my goodness. I no longer have to wear my hair back in a bun. I can wear my hair, hair out. I can wear bright colors. I can wear things that make me feel confident and beautiful. And yes, even a little bit, you know, well, I was about to say a little bit sexy, a lot of it sexy because that's just me trying to downplay something. No, I feel good in certain outfits, but it drew attention in corporate. Not being in corporate, I can do what I want. That opens the whole world up to you. Who would have thunk it that, I don't know, it was maybe like four months because I stopped in October. So this was maybe like May or June. So that's even longer. That's like eight months. So we're sitting here one day. I was like, why am I still wearing my hair back in this bun? <laughs> I can take it out. <laughs> I can do what I want. I can show up how I want. Um, and that's something that, you know, again, we do not, it, it is our default setting to consider ourselves. But again, we've had so much input. If you imagine like a phone, there's been so many updates and then the updates are updating other updates and things that came up from the last, you know, update. That is all of the people contributing their expectations into our lives. And that's us processing it and doing our best to have that speed and efficiency and not freeze up and, you know, juggling all these things. So let me pause here, grab some water. Um, and before I talk about um, there's four quick ways that I said quick ways. There's four ways that I'm going to quickly tell you about that you can um, start overcoming some of these things. And then I'm going to read the chat here. All right. So <laughs> that's right, Pisces. We have to deprogram. Okay. I am going to, again, I hope this is okay. I'm going to put, 
I'm going to put these on the screen. That's what all the other YouTubers do, but I still like to be respectful just because everybody else is doing it. It doesn't mean I have to do it. Okay. So let me read here. Your hair journey is so enlightening and sobering. There's a lot to get into there regarding our community and our issues. So glad you are on the other side and wearing your beautiful hair out with pride and love. Thank you, Pisces. I agree. I love my hair <laughs> when she's acting right. Okay. We don't talk about that because she's, she's acting right today. So let's just keep it positive. Okay. Something else completely. I can relate with everything that you've been saying right now. I am a people pleaser. Totally. I've been working on fixing this for a while now. Yes. And thank you, um, Jace, because I have to, you know, it's been about five years now and that's okay. It, this is, if you think about your age and you think about, let's make, let's make um, some bookends. I want you to think about your first memory um, of people pleasing, conforming, doing as you're told, um, you know, being sometimes beat or, um, you know, uh, physically, emotionally abused in, into a uh, kind of submission. And that could be in a, into adulthood. It could be when you're young. For me, I have very vivid memories. I was probably about four. That's where it started for me. And then I think about where I started. I was 41. Okay. So we've got 36 years. Wait a minute, four. 41, 35 years. We've got 35 years of me building up to this version of myself. So why would I think that in five years, I'm going to be, um, you know, I don't want to say completely loosed from it <laughs> because I am, but there's remnants of it as with anything, you know, when you start cleaning, you move furniture, you're doing that deep clean, you're going to find some, well, maybe it's just me. My hair is everywhere in this house. Like <laughs> I find, I call them hair bunnies. I find them everywhere, everywhere. You know, when you start to reveal these things, you may see that there's some remnants of stuff. Okay, I know I clean this house good, but hold on, let me look behind here. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's some, you know, dust bunnies or some hair back there. So there's always going to be areas that um, we work towards improving and becoming um, more distance from that version of us that we used to be. And I am leaps and bounds in a completely different person than I was five years ago. Then I was honestly, I don't know, six, seven months ago even, but there are still some things that pop up. And as I mentioned um, at the top of this, there, are, I'm going to share with you a story um, of how people pleasing showed up. And I will uh, tell you that it was to the tune of, I think, $2,500, but I'll explain it. Um, one moment, please. Okay. What do we got here? Um, I can relate to needing to trust my gut. There have been so many times when I should have gone with my first thought, but then I would have, would second guess myself. Yes. And here's something else too, that, you know, I encourage my clients, my friends, even my son, who is almost 30 years old at this point, but it's still, he's still a human. He's still a person. We can coulda, woulda, shoulda all we want. And as a matter of fact, that is where the guilt and the shame and the condemnation comes in. And we can get stuck there. We can get trapped there. So, you know, uh, on your path to self-discovery, it's not paved yet, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be some kind of bumpy roads. Maybe you're going to hit the wrong rock. A certain way it's going to blow that tire out, okay? You fix the tire, you keep it pushing. You call in, you know, AAA or what have you, and then you get back on the road. And again, as you go through this, I, I, I want to encourage you because I'm not trying to be, you know, you better not. But, you know, in my experience, when you start to feel the coulda, woulda, shoulda, acknowledge your feelings, you know, respect them, honor them because you, ha you have to feel them and then release it and make sure that you don't get stuck there for any extended period of time. Again, begin to trust your own intuition. These things are just going to start pouring into you. And then you can go ahead and push them out to make room for more things to come in. All right. What do we have here? I can finally wear my dreadlocks. You get it. You get it. Okay. Again, we are told, first of all, we're told that we are, or we, we are told and we feel, we are told to feel. That's a better way to say it. By pretty much everyone in our world that we are lucky to have this job. We are blessed to have these jobs. Um, if I had this, if I had what you had, I'd be doing, you know, fill in the blank. 
Well, you don't, okay, this is happening to me, but still, that is constantly being reinforced to us that, you know, we should be grateful. We should um, see it as a blessing to be at these jobs. So, you know, we have to assimilate. We have to, um, you know, in my case, play small in an attempt to blend in. I even made, I used to make my voice higher. I started, I realized I had a therapy session. Um, I'll just tell you briefly, I had a therapy session earlier this week. And um, somehow we started talking about <laughs> like how I remember being teased in the seventh grade and some boys saying, why are your voice so deep? I don't know why I made mine deeper because they had, you know, it was more like, why is your voice so deep? <laughs> but I remember like, whoa, my voice is, is deep my entire life. People would say, whoa, that's a big voice for such a little girl, because I really have sounded <laughs> like this <laughs> since I could talk. My mother has, um, well, she's passed away, but my sister has them now, but my mother used to record all of us on cassette tapes. And you would hear, we call my sister, my older sister, Minnie Mouse, because she, she still has a high voice, but her voice was extra high, like Minnie Mouse. And you would hear my mother talking to her. They were doing something, let's just say making Play-Doh or something like that. And then you would hear in the background, Ugh mama and she'd be like oh april's up let's go get april <laughs> so again it, it's almost like how people say they don't realize they were poor until somebody told them or later in life they realized they were poor i never realized that there was anything wrong with my voice but from that day forward i made my voice higher and higher and higher and it has taken i would say about it took i shouldn't say taken it's it took about a year and a half to stop doing that completely. Because when I got uncomfortable, or when I got nervous, or when I was like putting on, you know, go, um, turn it, flipping the switch on to, uh, you know, present this alternate version of myself that looks like they have it all together, my voice would go higher. So I would pay attention to that and correct myself on the inside. And now, you know, I speak how I speak, but I mean, you know, that, again, it is so unique for every person that, you know, okay, let me get this last comment here. And then we're going to talk about the four ways because I got a story for y'all and I can't wait to tell you. Okay, um, here we go, Shamika. Hello, Shamika. This is a new name. Look, this is my second live. I'm over here talking about this is a new name. <laughs> I know Meg P. I know Pisces. Okay, we got Jace is a new name that I remember seeing. And then we got Shamika. Who welcome Shamika and Jace. Okay, so Shamika said, that's right. Don't should yourself. I appreciate the recognition that um, shoulds lead to guilt or shame because it does. So, all right. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Pisces, Pisces is, um, she's over here hyping me up, so I got to read it. <laughs> she's like, April, you're a mess. But yes, you never forget when people point out what they deem as flaws. They get so ingrained. Yeah, it really does. Um, all right. So let me briefly tell you um, these ways. Now, ready? we've talked about the societal expectations. We talked about the gender role expectations. We talked about the cultural expectations. We talked about the spiritual expectations um, that have, again, pieces, pieces, pieces that we've picked up along the way. I want to talk about um, these four ways briefly on how you can work towards overcoming these things. Now, when I do lives, when I make these lists, when I show up here, um, I guess teaching, sometimes preaching, and then the rest of the percent is it's cutting up. <laughs> but when I do that, it's because I want you to always, always, always think about how is this showing up in my life? Some things may be obvious, but you know, how is this showing up in my life? So the first thing I'm going to say is self-awareness is key. Self-awareness is key. You will hear me say that over and over again. I've been saying it for years and it's the truth. Becoming more self-aware. How do you do that? You got to trust your gut. You have to trust your intuition. You have to not second guess yourself. You have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive other people. You have to ask yourself, what is it that I want, that I like, that I don't want, that I don't like? What brings me joy? What gets on my nerves? I mean, ask yourself, check in with yourself. And if this is something difficult for you to, um, you know, kind of step aside and see see this objectively or to be able to get in touch with that person. I want you to pretend that you yourself are talking to a friend. So the situation that you have, what would you say 
if it was a friend. If a friend asked you, look, I need to make a list of all of the things, you know, for my affirmations. I, I did that with one of my clients um, on Sunday. I said, okay, I, I want you to make a, we're going to do some affirmations. I want you to make a list. Ask, um, you know, your husband. He loves you more than anyone. Ask him, what does he love about you? Because there's times when, when we struggle to love ourselves and the right trusted person can point you in the right direction. So again, those are some things to ask yourself. And also pay attention with self-awareness on times when you get ready to say yes. And you still may, okay, let's not act like all of a sudden you're about to hop off here, you know, control, I'll delete. Well, I'm on the laptop, but you know what I mean? Like I'm done, I'm telling everybody no. Okay, new year, new me, new no. Okay, that's not what I mean because that's not that's unrealistic and it's not sustainable. That's like, you know, going from uh, kindergarten and you know how to read, now we're gonna put you in sixth grade reading. No, even if you do say yes, make a note of it. Just become more aware. Become aware of why you're doing things. Check in with yourself. What do you feel when you get ready to say yes? Did you feel that? Oh, I don't want to. Even if you say yes, next time, let's try not to say yes. Or let's think about some more thought. Because you can always say, I'll let you know. Um, you can put me down as a maybe. Or I'll keep you posted. You don't have to say yes. You don't have to say no. You know, you have options. Okay. The next thing is one of my favorites. And that's boundary setting. Now, I'm going to do a whole other video on that because it is a lot easier said than done. Kind of like how I broke down all the different ways people pleasing can show up. Saying to put boundaries in, you know, how do you start establishing boundaries is something that needs to be broken down. But I can tell you like an overarching view of it is say no when you feel like you don't want to do something. Um, make promises to yourself that you keep, that you honor them. If you say, I'm going to prioritize myself, I'm going to prioritize self-care, whatever it looks like for you. Think about the things that used to bring you joy that you've fallen off of. Is that hanging out with your friends? Is that going to get your toes done? Because, you know, you sit in those chairs and, you know, you be listening to the people gossip about other folks and their language and things like that. Is it going to get your hair done? Because if I could tell you, you see, I got my eyes closed because I'm, I'm back there. I have not had someone besides myself just get in there and just, you know, that feeling when you're in a bowl and they're scratching your scalp and it's just like, yes, I haven't had that probably, I don't know, at least 15 years. I would love nothing more than to have somebody wash my, <laughs> wash my hair for me <laughs> just so I can experience that. You know, think about those things that you like to do and make a promise to yourself. Again, it doesn't have to be, okay, I'm going to start doing that beginning tomorrow, you know, this list of 20 things, just pick one that's the easiest. Now is the time when you want to acquiesce. Let's acquiesce to, <laughs> to what you have, um, have a bandwidth for and have room for emotionally. Okay. So again, communicating your needs to yourself and then communicating them to others is a big part of establishing those boundaries. Now, the third thing that you can do is, is challenge not only societies expectations and norms, but your own. As I mentioned to you, at one point it was nearly every day, but it is definitely a couple times a month to a few times a month that I realize that I'm doing something and I ask myself why, it's because I've always done it. Now, I'm in the legal regulatory space. That is throughout my industry, what you never wanna hear. <laughs> like your client or your employer, like to say, we've always done it this way because that means that there's no growth. That means that there's no change. That means that you have not um, had any type of independent or internal reviews, like audits. We're talking about nothing that you've been able to slide by. And why is this? Because you've always done it that way. And if you think about it this way, growing up, you did things that your parents, the school that, you know, you were uh, raised to do. And then into adulthood, you carried those with you. And then you started to add on some more things that you did because others told you to do. Again, the part of you that wants to do it, that part is so far back in the, you know, in the nosebleeds. You can't even see it. You can't hear it, whatever. you. Then you've got you now who says, I no longer want to do these things. I, I, I want to do things that, um, you know, are challenging for me that um, buck my status quo, that are not me doing it because I've always done it. And when you 
connect those dots, then you're like, I've been doing it because I've always done it. And it's doing things that other people told me I need to be doing and I should be doing. So what about me? Again, 2024, I've already started my selfish season. Okay. Um, but 2024 for me is the year that I am going to be as selfish as possible and not in a derogatory sense, but I mean, root word of selfish self. It is all about me. I raised my child. He's good. I have, <laughs> I was about to say raised my ex. <laughs> that sounds bad. He's good. I have, you know, um, the income coming in that I need to come in. That's good. Like all the bases are covered. Now it's time to, to hit a home run with myself. Okay. You know, I stay using and mixing different analogies, <laughs> metaphors, similes, and analogies. Okay. Um, so again, think about, and, and that's, that goes back to, was that number that goes back to number two and number one, honestly, because these all, you know, um, coexist and they work in conjunction with each other, but check in with yourself when you get ready to say yes, even if you do say it, ask yourself why, and then that's going to reveal some things to you. Um, okay. And then we've got last but not least, I'm always going to tell you to seek some support and seek community. Now, I'm a fan of talk therapy. I am a fan of board certified and licensed professionals. Um, I know in the black community, we are told that we don't go tell people, telling people our business. I know as black women, we have been told that we are supposed to be strong and we have put the cape on. And, you know, for a while I still had had my cape. OK, it's, it's packed up someplace, but I had it, you know, kind of like behind me is where I put my sweaters. <laughs> So it was there. Okay. When I took it off, it was there. Okay. Cause if I need, okay. If I, if I get a little bit cold, this is unfamiliar. I'm like, I'm feeling, let me throw my cape back on. So again, these are things that we are, we are going back to our default settings. The, the, the us that we either dreamed about the us that we thought we would be, or the us that, you know, I believe in my heart that we are intended to be. And it's okay. Again, better late than never. All right. Um, so the first thing is get some professional support. That is a, a, a licensed talk therapist, um, a counselor, um, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist. Get you someone to talk to that it is their true lane is to be able to help you go from where you are right now to where is a healthy place for you to be. I, I love me some YouTube University. Um, as I mentioned, I have three degrees. I didn't mention uh, my multiple PhDs that I received from YouTube University, but YouTube University and your friends and your family are not licensed, board certified, trained professionals, okay? Now, where they can come in, potentially, potentially, is as that community piece that I spoke of. Again, there is nothing like a feeling of belonging. I'm always going to mention anytime that I do a live, I do conversation, I always talk about community. I always mention Exodus Summit. And I do that. Yes, I'm sure there are plenty of other groups out there. My introduction to other Black women who said, I'm done doing for everybody else, I want to do for myself. I want to travel the world. I want to move abroad. I want to you know, travel the country in you know, a tiny house or a fifth wheel. I want to house it. I want to, whatever, sell my house, all types of things. That, that was my first introduction in Exodus Summit. Yes, it is a summit, an actual summit is, that is uh, put on annually, um, but it is also a huge Facebook community. And that is where I've met several people that I consider my friends at this point and several other women to encourage me. I'm out in 2024, I'm leaving this country. I'm in a group that's literally titled We Out in 2024. Um, of all of us, we're working on decluttering. We encourage each other. If somebody says like, yeah, what am I doing? Is this a mistake? You know, we lift each other up. There is something for everyone in that Exodus Summit Facebook group. Make sure that your profile picture is of a Black woman, at least to get in, because they will not acknowledge you. All right. So I want to run back over these real quick. Um we have now these are the ways that people please and can, can potentially show up one difficulty saying no two overextending yourself three sacrificing your dreams and personal goals 
four, avoiding conflict, five, seeking external validation, six, neglecting self-care and self-prioritization, seven, striving for perfection, eight, fearing rejection, nine, feeling guilty, and 10, ignoring red flags um, or your intuition. And the ways, the four ways that you can start to overcome this, these are things you can do right now, today, are, um, you know, just begin checking in with yourself and developing and strengthening your self-awareness, um, that mind-body connection. Also, uh, by setting boundaries. Um, third thing you can do is challenging those societal norms and expectations and also um, your expectations, the things that you've done because you've always done it this way. And uh, the last point is seeking support and community. All right, so I'm going to hit the chat. Um, let me know um, because, oh, look at your girl. Okay, I went I went over my hour, <laughs> which is fine. I'm going to pass off and play again one more time. Um, and like I said, if you... Uh, have not yet touch and agree with your neighbor by hitting that like button. All right, let's see what we have here. And let me know if you have any questions or if there's, um, you know, a point that you want to make. I will gladly pull it up on the screen here. Um, okay, so we got with Shamika. Thanks to being made of my freshman year in college, I intentionally, intentionally lost my Texas twang and I miss it. You better go get it back, okay? If you watch if you watch my um, my uh, decoding perfection video, like the way that I was talking, um, because again I will over edit, I will shoot things fifty eleven million times, and then I have to go in and chop and screw. Speaking of Texas, I have to go in and chop and screw and remix, you know, and Frankenstein uh, some things. Well, technically Frankenstein's monster, but we're not here to talk about that. Um, and so in that, as far as far as accents, I said, uh, you know. And before we can talk about, what did I say? And before we can talk about perfection, we got to talk about conditioning. That is conditioning. Then the next scene is conditioning is <laughs> because sometimes the Cleveland comes out. Look, I, I, the way that my voice sounds, how it sounds, the tone, um, the octaves, all of it, I speak how I speak. And, and that has been um, teased out of us. It has been, um, I think, uh, you know, as generations go on, um, that's a whole nother thing, but we don't want to be associated with them, you know? So we need to speak different. We have to speak proper. I mean, I used to get teased all the time. Like, why do you talk so white? Well, I, I speak the way I speak because everybody <laughs> at my school is white, you know? Um, this is not like, or you want to be white. Even if I did want to be white, which I never have, I don't think that um, they're going to let me into the white folks uh, coalition or whatever. So, you know, again, I encourage you to let it, let it come out. Put yourself, look, for me, okay, I would say, all right, now this is before uh, the Lord heard my cry back in July 2001 and many times since, but I would say, look, you better put some, um, <laughs> some Paul Wall on, some, uh, <laughs> some UKG, <laughs> some eight ball. Just get, you know, get the accent back. But I don't know how you grew up. Okay, so that's me telling on myself. Okay, keep me in your prayers. All right. But yeah, it's things like that. Like Shamika said, that can be, you know, they stick with us. We never forget how we felt in that moment and we carry that with us. Um, let's see. Um, Jay said, boundary is a hard one to establish. I step over myself all the time to not disappoint people. Exactly. I get it. And that's something that that you will work on um, in one way or another for many years. Now, again, it doesn't mean that I'm, I am nowhere near where I was before, but every now and again, you know, it, um, comes up on me. And like I said, I got to tell y'all stories. So let me get through these comments. Cause I forgot, but I just remembered. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have another one, uh, that Pisces said, Shamika, don't you pick it up easily when you go back home? That's what I was thinking. Or when you talk to your people, um, if you no longer live in Texas, I wish I could have could have completely dropped the parts of my accent. I don't like, oh, I love accents. Some people think, you know, did I have one? And don't let me start speaking Spanish because I used to speak Spanish fluently. I taught um, English to uh, at high school, but also at night to the parents. So I had an accent for years simply because I would pronounce. <laughs> people would be like, what are you? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm like, Cleveland. They're like, mm. 
<laughs> you sound Puerto Rican. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we have Exodus Squad. Yes, it's, you know, that is my, um, that's my introduction to, you know, this portion of joy that I have and, and the feeling of belonging and, and really having a community. It feels so good. Um, we, uh, we have Pisces. You are right. When I talk to my mom and grandma on the phone or when I'm home, it does come back. I know it does because when I go down south, which people that live in the south think that's funny, but that's what we say up north. When I go down south, please, my accent comes right back um, because I used to spend the whole summer speaking a certain way. And there's still things that I say, even the way I speak in there. Like um, I used to live in uh, Nashville. I hear, did you hear it? I didn't say Nashville. I said Nashville. I used to live in because that's the way I say it. I used to live in Nashville um, uh, for grad school. Um, when I went to grad school and uh, I still say that Nashville, um, Clarksville, uh, Louisville. <laughs> um, when I visit New Orleans, my family in New Orleans, you know, I hear certain things happen. It's just, you know, like, but if you love your accent, I encourage you get it back. It's there. Just like it took me a minute to get my voice to stay here. You know, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? Today was such an Exodus Summit session day. This is my fourth live. They were overlapping. Oh, yes, I know. I have to go back and watch um, D from H&D Abroad. I, you know, unfortunately, our times um, intersect, but I love Thursdays. That's my favorite day of the week. It has been for as long as I can remember. So anything is, that I can is going to happen on Thursday. And my birthday is on Thursday this year. So you can't tell me nothing. Okay, um, here we go. Yes, yeah, so I think those are all of the comments. All right, now let me briefly tell you. Okay, so if you watch my live yesterday, yesterday, Lord, let me get some water. Why am I drinking water like this is? <laughs> like it's going to do something <laughs> in my mind it does. I think because when I'm recording, if I mess up, it's usually... Like my mouth is dry, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so last week on my live, I uh, talked about this workshop that um, I was hosting on Sunday, December 17th. And in that, I struggled to explain it. And I even made mention of it. If you go back and watch, I'm like, you know what? I said, I said I'm going to have to think about this. And I mentioned it a couple of times. I'm like, I'm not sure why this is coming out this way. Um, and I even said, you know, admittedly, this is not my best work, but I'll have it together next week. I mean, I do, but it still probably comes across the same. <laughs> okay, let me stay on task. Okay, I'm delirious over here. Now, when I got off that live, I played, replayed that over and over and over and over again. Now, before I would have been replaying it because like, you should have done this better. You could have done this better. You shouldn't have said those things. You shouldn't have said that. Um, that's the beauty of going live that I love. And I've always loved about going live. You know, when I did it on LinkedIn, when I did it on other people's YouTube channels, when I was doing it on Facebook and Instagram, I love it because this is my personality. Yes. Um, I could be, but why, you know, I'm that way all day. I'm rigid all day. I don't need to be that. This is my little space. This is our time together. So anyway, I was thinking about it because something didn't feel right. Again, I am in touch and, and I strive, um, to increase that mind-body awareness, to continue to listen to myself and not second-guess it. And I realized that what happened was people-pleasing showed up. And that is actually what led me to make this video. Now, my people-pleasing is primarily by, um, if you ask me to sum up the way people-pleasing shows up in my life, I will say it showed up as not wanting to disappoint people. Where I'm from in Cleveland, we are very big on our word is our bond. We don't flake out on people. Again, these are all, I guess, good, but can potentially be harmful things. Um, and in my case, it was it it just served as additional validation as to why I have to, you know, say yes to things, why I have to do it even if I don't feel like it, why I just gotta, you know, dug it out and just push through. And you've been through more and motivate myself by just um, you know, really negative self-talk. I didn't feel it was negative at the time, but you know, negative self-talk. Now. When I left corporate, if you've seen my um, original video, I think, uh, what is it? Um, five things I wish another black woman would have told me before I quit that good job, because that's what I say in there. I'll link that as well. I mentioned that I left corporate. I was so uncomfortable with nothing to do that I started some businesses. And 
I stopped, I went on a sabbatical and then I fell back a lot from my businesses and just let them, you know, the affiliate things I have, it still brings in revenue, but I was not an active part of any of my three businesses and have not really been for at this point about two and a half years. But the last time that I was in this marketing sprint, the last time that I was coming up with, you know, working on my slides and practicing my content was the old April who started businesses because there was a need. And, you know, like, man, I need to help these people. I have to help them. Who is there to help them? You know, I felt this, this obligation, this that I that I couldn't disappoint the people who needed to hear what I had to say. Again, healthy, um, completely understandable, and um, you know, admirable quality to have. But coming through my lens, that means that I need to think about everybody and the visual learners, the audio learners, those who like to see my face those who want to watch the words on the screen, those who like to read eBooks. I mean, all types of stuff. Now, as I mentioned, I'm a voice um, voiceover artist. I have a literal full studio in my house. When I created the what ended up being the Design Your Dream Life planning workshop, it was actually called Plan with Prill. And it's supposed to be an audio course. Now, you still get a workbook. You still get these different visual things. Um, you know, I'd always plan to include, um, uh, you know, like a PDF version of the content, you know, that I'm reading because everybody doesn't want to, you know, listen to it or some people need to see it. And somehow, like three, four months ago, I said, this is going to be the audio course. I was good with that. And it turned into at the very last minute, last week, <laughs> last Sunday to be exact, to doing this live workshop. And it hit me that that's why I was stumbling over my words. That's why it was difficult for me to explain what it was because even though I had a sales page written, I had everything. I mean, I just had to flip the switch so that it would pop up and, and be populated. Like this was initially the first run, but yet I was doing it, putting other people's needs before my own. Why do, do I want to do audio? Because audio doesn't require me again as a VO artist i don't have to be in the best mood necessarily to become a character when i'm getting paid when i feel um have the energy i can record and record and just knock it out for the course materials if my anxiety is cutting up that day if there's personal things going on in my life if i'm traveling audio is always there and i promised myself that the audio course was a was a happy medium because again you have that balance was a happy medium between making myself available without making myself accessible like i don't want to it, it pulls on me too much and i'm not ready for that yet it's on my 2024 list to begin taking on more coaching clients because i have some already but to kind of re-enter that i jumped the gun I went from kindergarten to sixth grade reading. I fell back into my old pattern. Now, did it show up how it looked before? No, but my last point of reference of doing these activities was when I was that old version of myself as a business owner. And you know what I did? In that moment, I decided, um, cause it was late. I said, okay, well, first thing tomorrow, I'm gonna draft up this email, letting people know that the workshop is canceled and um, that I'm going to uh, refund their money. Now that was 20 people at $125 a pop. Let me say this. When I woke up in the morning, it was sold out. That already told me the price was too low. I knew the price was low, but whatever. <laughs> but that told me, okay, that price is too, too low. If all 20 spots are gone. The other thing that um, it allowed me to do, and this is the part that I say is a win for me, Instead of doing it because that's the path to least resistance, doing it because I don't want to disappoint people and I gave my word, doing it because I got on the YouTube streets and used the free bit.ly that I put all over the place that I can't even go and change and redirect someplace. You need a paid plan. I, but you know what I didn't think about? I didn't think about what were others going to think of me. 
Um, does it look like I failed uh, or anything? To me, the fact that even when there was what, $2,500 on the line, I chose me and I went back to my original plan and I sent a very nice email. I gave people two options. Um, a handful said they wanted a full refund. The other one said that they will take the exclusive access, <laughs> you know, when the when the course is ready and it'll be ready in, in, you know, by January. And I will definitely announce it when it's ready. But I said, I cannot wait to share this with um, you know, the YouTube audience. I was going to talk about something else tonight, but then I said, I need to talk about people pleasing because this is what being a recovering people pleaser looks like. Is saying not only is it okay that I honor myself, not only is it okay that I make it, you know, ch change the plans back to what I promised myself, not only is it okay to tell people, because imagine if I didn't tell you that story. Well, I mean, as I say that, it's like, well, I think you would be left with this, which I think is is some, you know, good meat and potatoes. But think about the impact, because I think about the impact that seeing another business owner that had promoted something that sold out told me that they decided to give the money back because it was the right thing to do, and they were going to honor themselves. That would have saved me. I would say probably about $60,000 of money that I spent just trying to feel, trying to trying to get my footing when all along I was where I was supposed to be. But I was too busy going all around the mulberry bush trying to do what everybody else was doing or everybody else said I was doing, needed to do as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. So I want to, to use this as is my example to you all, living an example of what it looks like when people pleasing does creep up on you again or show up in an unexpected way and how you choose you first. So let me go ahead here to the chat. I don't see anybody else's comments in the chat. So you can let me know if you have any uh, closing thoughts um, before I hop off here, but um, you know, I'll just go ahead and wait. Um, a couple of people that I wanna shout out, if you were having uh, if you are at a toxic job currently um, and you really want some guidance on <laughs> how you can uh, get out of there, I want to encourage you to check out Dr. Kamani with uh, Lifting As We Climb Consulting Wellness. Also, if you want to see some people who are a couple that are also being extremely honest about what packing up their house, getting their residen residency in Mexico, dealing with, um, not dealing with, but yeah, dealing with the emotions that comes with leaving aging parents and leaving adult children behind. I encourage you to check out H and D abroad and D on Thursdays at this same time. So you might have to watch a replay, but <laughs> go and support her on that channel because on Thursday she is doing um, a self-care series that she started she fell off of and she, you know, has picked back up. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Pisces, I chose me. And again, it's easier said than done, but it becomes easier every single time you do it. It's a habit. I couldn't in good, good conscience do that to myself. I was already getting anxious. I was already feeling that resistance. Again, we ignore our intuition, but I was, I was, I, I went, I turned inward and intentionally asked myself, what is going on? And then I was reminded of a promise that I made. Um, and Shamika, you are welcome. Let me go ahead and put this up here. Um, Shamika said, I appreciate your honesty and openness. Thank you for not only sharing your story, but sharing ways forward. Yeah, like I want everybody to win. And winning looks different to all of us. It's a subjective term, but I want you to win in your life. And I don't wanna just show you this, you know, version of me, there's going to be some content because look, let's be clear. When I start traveling the world, <laughs> I'm going to be making some vlogs <laughs> because I'm probably going to be like, it's going to be like Blair Witch Project. I'm going to be like, I'm in the Delta Lounge. I'm about to get on this plane. I don't know how I feel right now, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I enjoy making cinematic, um, you know, videos that I make for my myself. I enjoy editing. I love it. But I really enjoy um, showcasing beauty through, you know, visual arts with photography and with, um, you know, like little, just like I said, visually appearing, uh, visually uh, aesthetic in 
and aesthetically pleasing mediums. So you can you can hang in there for that. But <laughs> like I said, we're in this together. I want you to win. I want you to smile like I'm smiling. I want even when things are not maybe how they should be for you to know how to course correct, how to check in with yourself, how to begin to put yourself first and to actually see me tell you that this is, you know, it's not over yet. Um, I'm definitely not where I was, but I'm not, you know, it's not done yet. And I get excited about that. Growth is exciting. So, all right. I thank you so much for your time today. I'm going to go ahead and hop off. I do ask that if you haven't liked this video, please go ahead and like it. If you are not subscribed to my channel and this is something that, uh, you know, this kind of content you enjoy, then go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell because I'm going to start dropping some things, some replays of, um, with permission, of course, I already got permission, but some replays of um, when I was on Dr. Kamani's channel. Um, I'm going to drop those uh tomorrow and then saturday and there's a couple of videos that i am going to be making that are not live so go ahead and hit the notification bell and um yeah share this with some other black women who need to hear this it is important that we get this message out to as many people as possible um and if you're thinking she reminds me of my friend send it to that friend okay that's the one that's the one who's gonna be like she is delightful <laughs> Hey, I see from from like to uh, legacy is here. Hello, we have to connect. We gotta connect. Um, but yeah, go ahead and uh, you can catch the beginning of the live. But yeah, I thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. You don't have to be here, and you are. And um, either way, I'll be here if I have to talk to myself. But it is nice to know I'm talking to other people. So again, thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.